What caused the tragedy of the Vietnam War? Historians can always point to deep forces to explain that defining event in 20th century American history. Geography and demography and environment. Ideology and economics and sociology. Race and class and religion. Implicit is the assumption that whatever happened must have happened, that there is no conceivable alternative. Such a deterministic outlook is alluring but ultimately not compelling. It ignores the role of contingency and the impact of decisions made by human and hence fallible historical actors. At various points from 1954 to 1975, from the beginning of America's predominant influence in Indochina to its apogee in the 1960s and its humiliating end, Events might very well have taken a different course. There were many turning points along the way. One was especially significant. When veterans and old-timers, former officials and retired reporters, analysts, and historians try to explain how the United States became so deeply embroiled in Vietnam, they often point the finger of blame at one particular 24-hour period from midday on Friday, November 1st, 1963, to midday on Saturday, November 2nd. What happened in those hours would wind up dashing a vision best enunciated by the American advisor and intelligence officer Edward Lansdale of how communist advances might be resisted by building up a viable South Vietnamese state that could win the loyalty of its people. The events of November 1st through 2nd opened a Pandora's box of body counts, bombing runs, free fire zones, and search and destroy missions that would lead ultimately to the destruction of South Vietnam, along with the presidency of Lyndon Johnson. It would maim the foreign policy credibility of the Democratic Party, at least temporarily, and terminate the post-war consensus in American foreign policy. More important than anything, it would also lead to the destruction of countless lives, American and Vietnamese, both fighters and, in the case of the Vietnamese, bystanders. <laughs>